A journalist, Agba Jalingo, has been released from prison after meeting his bail conditions. Jalingo, who is the publisher of Cross River Watch, was first arrested by the police in August 2019 <coughs> on the orders of then Ayade led Cross River State Government. He was subsequently arraigned for treason and attempting to overthrow the state government due to highly critical articles he published. <coughs> Due to his long detention, Amnesty International had declared the activist a prisoner of conscience. The court, which had earlier rejected his bail application, subsequently granted him bail last week, which he met. With me in the studio to have a conversation in this, or two uh, gentlemen, we have uh, Mr. Libora Soshoma, legal practitioner. Thank you for staying with us. And we have joining us afresh, Bolaho Olujidi, political analyst. Good Pleasure to be to here. to have you. Join us. All right, let's start with the question on everybody's lips is why now his bill conditions were rejected uh, on previous uh, occasions? Let's start with you, um, Golaham. Yeah, well, um, we had a Shora case as well, whose bill conditions <laughs> were rejected and eventually he was let go. Don't forget that at some point, the problem with Agbajalingo was linked to Shore as well. It was said to have protested on that day and to have, even after Shore was arrested, that he had said, oh, the revolution continues. So it would have been, it would have started becoming more absurd and odd that the Shore himself has been released and you have Agba Jalingo still in prison. If that was the reason, I'm not sure exactly why Agba Jalingo was in jail. Okay. Do, do you see a connection between the case and why now? <laughs> there, are no, there, are no, there, there are definitely no connection. Abba Jaligu is my very good friend. Um, um, even before his arrest, I was aware. I was supposed to be one of the lawyers in the matter. Um, he, he has been vociferously criticizing Governor Ben Ayade. He supported Ben Ayade's election. He campaigned vigorously for him um, using his... Um, is a media outfit, um, Cross River Watch. And when Ben Ayade, you know, started deraying from his campaign promise and ideology, Agba Jalingo was one of the first persons who first raised his voice against it, and that this was not the promise he made to the people. And, and so, um, event culminated into all of this when he raised an alarm that there was a 500 million naira, you know, uh, microfinance bank uh, funds that the governor you know, diverted and that he should account for it. And the governor took offense. And then there was a, a petition, a purported petition written by a faceless person from the microfinance bank that they had been libeled. It was on the ground of that petition that Agba Jalingo was arrested, dragged from Lagos all the way to Calabar. And then he got to Calabar, he was arrested, he was incarcerated at the police facilities, we reached out to some of Ben Ayade's associates. And all they kept telling us was Agba Jalingo should apologize to the governor and that also he should sign on an undertaking that he will no longer criticize. I also we visited Agba Jalingo in, in, in police custody and then he repeated the same thing to us that there were uh, pressure from Ben Ayade's camp. Brought, they brought document to him that he should sign and then um, he should sign on undertaking that he will no longer criticize you know, Ben Ayadi, he insisted. And, and so when that didn't hold water, they, you know, it was at that point that they did 360 because at that same time too, Showere was arrested. So they found a way to link him to Showere. Knowing fully where there's an associate of Showere, he worked before with um, Showere Sahara reporter. He's also the state chairman of uh, um, AA, that's Showere's uh, uh, party. party. And, and so they found a way to link him that uh, he's trying to overthrow President Buhari. And like, um, um, Bolaho mm -hmm. has said, now that Shores has been granted bail, so there will no longer be any ground, reasonable ground for the court in Cross River to deny him bail. And, and, and also quickly, I must add that, you know, after all of this, you know, initially it was the APC government at the center holding on to Shawere, and then the PDP government in um, at the state level holding on to Agba Jalingo. When the APC government at the center released Shawere, the leadership of the PDP also had to prevail 
on it. Because at that point, there was a, it was in the news that Atiku, you know, had to meet with the governor of Cross River State, that it was becoming shameful for, for, for them as a party, the way the international community and everybody was talking about it. So they had to quickly find a middle ground. And so that, uh, it was on those allegations and the allegation that there were a recording between the former judge that was handling the matter and the prosecutor that he was not going to allow Agba Jaligo go. And <coughs> that was when he was asked to recuse himself. Okay, and, see, you, you, you mentioned, we spoke a, a little earlier about this, and you mentioned the fact that there, there doesn't seem to be any merit in the suit by the government against Jalingo. So I'm going to put a question to you, Bolan. Do you expect that um, uh, Jalingo would have grounds to um, sue for damages um, in the event that we're presuming now, in the event that the case um, with the government is either thrown out or resolved in his favor? Most certainly. I believe if you put somebody behind the bars for four <clears throat> months and he shouldn't have been there, then you should have a basis for suing the government. However, it is also possible that, because when you really look at Agba Jalingo's case, it's essentially political, um, you know, abuse of power and all those stuff happen to be right in that mix. It might be a negotiation. Do you believe that the, the treatment that has been meted out to him might affect other journalists who have credible intelligence to put out to the public that something is not right within state government? Is it a bad precedent? Would it deter other journalists, in your opinion? It will deter some, while it will excite some. Because Agba Jalingo became so popular in the course of what has happened to him. So if what you're looking for is the possibility of that popularity, you, you might want to take a shot at talking about that. But in, in, for, for the most part, journalists are going to be weary about getting into that same space. And it is not good for us, which is why for me, it would be nice to see this case in court from the perspective of Oegba Jalingu taking the government to court for the four months of incarceration and getting them punished. For that, uh, obviously, it will, it will be financial punishment, but then let it come. So that we send a strong message to that space that, number one, you cannot treat journalists like this. Number two, if you do it, there will be appropriate measures against you. Uh, same question to you, uh, Yeah, um, I, I believe that all of these, um, they are trying to find a political solution to all of this. And, and so, like I told you earlier, there will be pressure on him um, to undertake not to criticize the government again, which he refused. And that um, now also, because the matter is probably becoming you know, shameful to the PDP-led government at the state level, and so they'll find a middle ground um, to you know, want to release him and then also probably might pr propose compensation. I've not spoken to Agba Jalingo since then. I intentionally didn't want to, so that I'm not biased on, you know, <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, my analysis of the situation, but then, I also believe that um, if, if I, I would encourage him to sue, uh, but he would have to wait till the charges are either, till he is discharged and acquitted. You know, because what they might do, if they know now that he might sue or he would want to sue, so they might just warehouse the matter in court. And you know, by warehousing, you just you keep going, mm. you know, every day. You know, and so if you now go to court to, to sue for damages, and then they will say, well, the matter is in court. You've not been discharged and acquitted. So on what basis you would, you be, would you be suing? So the matter, you know. So they might want to also play on that sentiment, knowing fully well that the windmill of justice here grind very, very slow. And, and, and so with time, we also forget the Nigerians, you know, we have this forgiving spirit. Oh, uh, yes, he's been released. Let him, let, just let bygone be bygone. See it as what you suffer being a journalist. You know, but really, I think we need to find a way of... Um, sending strong signals to those in authority, no matter how um, much of an emperor you want to be, that, you know, your uh, emperorship, your emperorship is like that of a tenured monarch and that there's rule of law and that you should be guided and bound by the rule of law. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's good to be here. Thank you.